geologists use that for compression faults, where the rocks are pushed together and they can't, they can either push and fold or they can push one group over another. And you see all these limestones on top, those are pushed and thrust over these Jurassic sandstones. And it's really spectacular for geologists to have such a nice example of thrusting. And this is one of the first really visited in, uh, places in America with thrust faulting because you have so often, you have such a clear stratigraphy. And we saw that at, uh, at uh, French and Mountain, you have the un great unconformity, and then you have layer after layer going from Cambrian up to, up to this uh, red rock, which is Jurassic. And that's all correct, the way it should be, the right order, younger rocks are on top of older. But then suddenly you get a, a nice sharp line, and you don't see that line here because we're too low. If we got up in a satellite or if you're in a plane, you see this sharp line in the train, and then you get the, the same stratigraphy on top of it again, thrust on top. And this is a, it's a puzzle, geological puzzle, because that's not the way it's supposed to be in geology. And even today, a lot of non-geologists deny that geology makes any sense, and this is a place they can point to and say, well, look, here your rocks aren't in the order you say they're supposed to be, and so you make up this ad hoc explanation that they've been thrust together and things. So it's kind of a fun place to discuss that. But, and the, this is a super nice, you see all this, these cars here because it's a super nice trail up to Calico Tanks and other things. This is one of the really nicest mm -hmm. trails, but it's also one of the more crowded ones, and so today we're going to sneak off to another one where we can see this thrust in a place where you don't have to have other people. So anyway, they, they try to explain here that the, the thrust of the rocks have been pushed up like that. But I don't like the way they've drawn this line. They've drawn it at a high angle that these rocks, were, which were down here, got pushed up on top of these flat line rocks. And, and that's partly, that's okay, but most, mostly the angle isn't so steep. It's more or less flat because they come up and they push up on top of each other. So I would draw this a little bit differently, but uh, it's, it's okay the way it's drawn. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into the, the, the detail. You give them a seed, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll go see if we can find this, this fault around, around the corner. They so, like Yaley's. <laughs> yeah, they would give me a seed too. <laughs> Anyway, so I don't know how many so you cars. Don't see the fault line? You, well, you can't. You can see it must be here because all these flat line gray rocks. Those are the Spring Mountains. That's the same rocks as Frenchman Mountain. They kind of look a little bit the same, and those are on top of these whitish, reddish sandstones. But we don't see the line from here because we're we're too down, we're too low. Okay. If we could get up a little higher, you would see a very straight line, and we'll see that a little bit another place. More, here are more brachiopods. This and that. Yep. So this one's pretty good. It's kind of sticking out. Got broken on this side. So there are a lot of fossils. That was cool that you found that. This is a black limestone. Limestones can be all kinds of colors. Gray, brown, red. This is black. And that's a... So is your car, they say. Hmm? <laughs> so is your car, they say. Yeah, that's right. Colors, <laughs> colors, I don't know. It's rather subjective. But here, here are a lot of fossils. That's not the kind I was looking for, because here it's not such a contrast of color. Right. In some of these gray limestones, you can see the, the white fossils. But here you see the three dimension. You see a little of the shell. And that's white. They're the same. They're made out of lime or calcite. And you can scratch, you can scratch marble. So I can carve my name in there very easily. Well, I'm going to report to you. Yes. <laughs> and you can scratch limestone very easily. It's very mm -hmm. soft. Mm -hmm. But yep. you can't scratch quartz. And that's how you test if this is really quartz or not. Another way to test it is to look at it and see. But it's hard. It's hard to tell. It has these white, shiny surfaces. So I think it's going to be calcite also. But it's not. It's uh, quartz. Yep. Oh, the quartz is yeah, harder. I'm not really scratching it. I'm mm -hmm. just actually just scratching my tool here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can't carve my name in that one. That's, mm -hmm. that's quartz or could... Yeah, that's really hard. Wow. Yep. And that's a really good technique for, for checking hardness. Because mm -hmm. limestone is soft. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can scratch it. And there, you can, so here you see all these different color limestones. Yep. That's what we have most of here is limestone. Mm -hmm. 
happens is there's just loose gravel, but there's limestone around, and that limestone dissolves a little bit and moves through the gravels and deposits cement and holds everything together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is an extremely young rock. It's not very strong, but it's, but it's a good example of how simple gravels can turn into a new conglomerate, a new, mm -hmm. a new rock. Calm. These little white mm -hmm. rings. Oh. Here's a cross section a little bit, but we don't see a good cross section or a length section. Those are cross sections. You can, if you look closely, you see a little pattern. You see it's definitely a, it's got structure in it. Those are little corals. Nobody knows that I've hiked. No, no, I know it's been a long time, but I see. Yeah, that like, could be. Like, that could like, be. Like, a, like, that's, a, that's a length cut through yeah. a long coral. Okay. I think it is, because that, that's what yeah. they can look like. They can look pretty long. That, that one's pretty good. It's not uh, beautiful, but it's obviously fossil. So what is this rock here? Well, it's either a limestone Ooh. or a shale, which should have been flat, but, but, but it hardened into a hard rock, and then the thrusting pushed, pushed it over the sandstones, which we haven't seen yet, but we were actually walking underneath our wash was the, were these sandstones. And now we're at the thrust contact. The thrust contact is right beneath us here. Unfortunately, we can't dig it. Just a few meters we would get to it, but we'll, we'll climb up and we'll find it different places. But this is a kind of folding. We call it folding. It should be horizontal flat layers, but during the, full, the pressure, there was a lot of little folds right at the thrust contact. So it's very dramatic here that these rocks have been deformed. And they were deformed after they were already hard. They weren't soft muds. They had already hardened into a hard rock. But there was so much pressure down in the earth where this thrusting occurred that even hard rocks get slowly changed. <laughs> So, so now we're going to climb up and, and into the sandstone. But because things are irregular, really the sandstone is beneath us. But it's, but, uh, it's also, we're also going to find it a little higher because it, the surface goes like this. Yeah, this is shale, really. It's, a, it's, not, it's probably limey shale. It's probably a mix of limestone and shale. The shale is also soft. You can scratch in shale. But it kind of Isn't looks... it very soft? Isn't that yes. how it gets oil on it? Yeah, it can be very soft. It's soft enough that you can scratch it with a piece of metal. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool the way that's folded. Yeah. So, so cool. Here also it's all... Down there was beneath us and we didn't see it. Here it's been lifted up a bit, but it's it's still flat line and it's now we're going to see things more or less the way they should be with the, with the sandstone like this and above there is the limestone and up on both sides is the limestone. So limestone is really thrust on top of the sandstone even though we saw it down there in the wash. It was also thrust on top of the sandstone there but that whole place had been dropped down a bit. And this whole place has been dropped down a bit so things are a little complicated but but you, well, if it hadn't been dropped down, we'd have to climb clear up, way up high to see this thrust contact. But the whole thrust contact has been dropped down to a lower level here. That's why this is an easy place to see the keystone thrust. But we don't see it yet because we have to find out what's on top of this sandstone. So we have to climb up around and, and look around, see if we can find the contact above this Aztec sandstone. sand and gravel sitting here, and next time it rains, this will erode, these will move around and scratch a tiny bit, and it gets deeper and deeper. So they start as almost nothing, in almost random places, but there's no place that's perfectly smooth. Every place has a little bit of irregularity, and those irregularities get exaggerated more and more, and those, those could eventually be big potholes. So there are lots of little details like that that are fun to, to look at. Yosemite. What are those rocks? Those are granites. They are granites.
totally different. But Zion has these rocks, same rocks as here. And here you really see that the cementation was irregular. Here you see tiny little holes like Jerry was asking about. These little tiny holes, they can be tiny or they can be big caves like in Valley of Fire and things or in Red Rock, oh. other places. Like here. But, but you see that there's just, it's just poorly cemented and it's starting to be dissolved along certain layers. Yeah, that's really, this is really beautiful because the, the coloring is, is completely It's followed the, the pattern of the original layering. So these were actually all white sands. They weren't red and pink sands. That all came later, but the, the color pattern mimicked or followed along the, in many places, along the original layering. So Alan, like the caves up there, the, yeah. those were formed by a weakness. Right, by, by poor cementation, poor cement, not enough cement was deposited in those places. And this is a microscopic example of that, and you can have huge examples of it. Is that the line? That's the contact where we want to go. And all these gray rocks up there are thrust on top. They're the old fossil rocks, which don't belong on top of these reds. But you see there's a, and it, the line is cutting across the structures, kind of like I didn't like in the sign. So th that sign was pretty good, actually, in, in the detail. In the, in the regional picture, it's much more horizontal. But here, it's really just like that. You can see the layering doesn't match on both sides. There's a line in between, and those gray limestones on top, they don't belong on top at all. They should be way beneath. But if you go up to that contact and try to put your hand on it, there's always gravel and bushes right where you want it to be. <laughs> so it's very hard to actually find it. This crack? Yeah. That's a crack like these other like this crack. But this crack got cemented really well. Here and just look at the boulders coming down. There are no more red ones coming down. Are they in this notch? Nope, they're all gray. So I think this is our con It's We're getting there, but I know if we go a little further around up into the next bedrock, because this surface, if I sight down, it's going down like that. It's going down like that and up like that. So it's that big red rock pointing, that I'm pointing to, the surface is right on top of that, the fault surface. Mm -hmm. going down. So that, that's